Hey folks, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be tackling something that has kind of been emerging lately. I've started to notice it in applications like my bank. It basically auto logs me out every time 10 or 15 minutes go by. It's very easy to implement, and I wanted to show you how you would do it with Vue. The implementation of this, I am using Laravel, but you don't have to use Laravel. This is not specific to Laravel at all. This is all about Vue. The way that this whole project came about to me was I was actually building a school system where users are able to go to a public computer to log in and do their schooling. Now, the problem is that sometimes they forget to log out. So we needed a way to make sure that they got bumped out if there was no activity. So this whole thing is kind of based around whether the user is actively using the site or not. And if they're not, we're gonna set some timers and we're going to log them out automatically, basically assuming that they are gone. So how does this work? Let me show you really quick. I've got here a user in my application. I will log them in. And as long as the user is performing some action, whether moving their mouse, clicking around, scrolling, all of that, notice that my application behaves exactly as it should. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've set the timers to very low numbers, just so that in the video, everything kind of runs smoothly. But you would set these at pretty high values, like 14, 15 minutes, or even more. Now, if I stop moving my mouse for four seconds, notice I will get a warning at the top. And there it is. So as soon as I move my mouse, that warning goes away because it's just a warning of, hey, are you still there? The user performs a quick action and we reset our timers. And so that's how that would work. I've chosen to go with this approach again because I was using this for a school, but this could be a popover. This could be just about anything. So now let's go ahead and let it just time out completely. So it's gonna give me that after four seconds. Now, if we wait an additional six seconds at 10 seconds, it will log me out of the application. And there it is, it logs me out. So let me erase all the code that I've written and let's start from scratch. So let's jump right to it. I will show you what I actually have here, but remember, this is completely backend agnostic. There is nothing holding you down to Laravel. I'll show you how to do this with any backend system that you have. It's all about Vue in this one. Let's take a look at what I have here. I'll jump into the browser. I've got a fresh Laravel installation. The only thing I've done is go ahead and set up Laravel UI. That way we have the login and all that. And I did register a user with test at test and let's put in my password and I can log in. That's it, that's all I've got. Awesome, so let's jump right into the code. Let's go ahead and create a new view component. This whole thing is going to be driven by a view component. I'll go into resources, JS components, and let's add a new view component. And I will give it a name of auto logout. Okay, let me go ahead and register this component with my application. I'll go in here and let's register it as auto logout, and then I'll be using it as auto logout. There we go. Okay, so it's nice that Laravel does have this already set up for us. It's very easy. But again, this could work in any view application. We are just creating a single file component. Okay, I do have NPM run in the background, running a watcher. That way everything gets compiled nice and easy. All right, back into PHP Storm. Let me go ahead and put this component somewhere. Right now, I don't really have a specific place for it, but I figured in a layout file will probably be the best place. That way we always have it in our application. Now, if we put it in the layout file just as is, then what can happen is you may use the same layout file when a user is logged in as when a user is logged out. And of course, we don't wanna log them out if they are not signed in. That doesn't make any sense. So for the time being, I would just go ahead and do a check to see if we are authenticated. And if we are, then I'll do that. So we'll do that with the blade directive of auth. That way we know if it's auth. And then in that case, we'll do the auto logout like so, and then we'll end auth. And that's it, that's all it takes. With Laravel, this will only display if we are authenticated. It's as simple as that. So just to test out that that is actually working, go ahead and uh, say hello right here. That way we know that it is working. Go back in here, I hit refresh, and sure enough, there's my component up there. And if I was to log out, of course, that would go away. All right, let's go back into the code. What are we trying to achieve here? Well, essentially, what we want to do is we want to record activity from the user 
on this page. If we don't detect activity for a certain period of time, let's give them a warning and say, hey, we are about to log you out. Are you sure you want that or are you still there? And if they don't respond, meaning that they actually don't perform any additional stuff, then in that case, we're going to log them out. It's as simple as that. And it's all about setting up two timers and then resetting those timers as users generate content. Now, the first thing I want to tackle is what are these events that can cause a timer to get reset? We're going to just add event listeners for these specific events. Now, the cleanest way that I've found to do this is just to have your data. And this, of course, is going to be a function that returns an object. And inside of here, let's just have a list as an array of events that I want to listen for. So what are some of the events that we want to listen for? Well, a click for one. So if they click on the page, we want to disable the timer. We'll also do a mouse move as well as mouse down. We'll also want scroll as well as any key press. And then finally, I will add load, meaning when the page loads, just in case, this is not particularly going to be triggered, I don't think any time, but it's always good to have just a good array of things that could happen to reset this timer. Again, remember, we are counting, and when a user generates one of these events, we're going to reset our timer, set it back to the default. That's all we're doing. So to systematically add event listeners to each one of these events, all we need to do is iterate through them using for each, and then just attach some sort of event listener. We can do that in the mounted state, so we'll say component, when you are mounted, let's go ahead and create these new event listeners. We will do this with this dot events dot for each. And then inside of here, we have a callback. So we'll say function is going to receive the event. And then right here, I can simply create my event listeners. We'll use the window for this. We'll say window dot add event listener. And the event listener that we're adding is event, whatever is being passed through right here. Let me actually rename this to event, not events. There we go. Because each one of these events will be just events, singular. So add an event listener for event, and then you're going to call some sort of function. We'll create a method for this, which we will call reset timer. Okay, now let's go ahead and create that method. We'll say methods, I have one called the reset timer. It'll be a function, there we go. All right, let me add the semicolon over here. So again, we need to reset our timers every time those events happen. However, we don't have any timers yet, right? So let's go ahead and tackle those because there's nothing for us to reset at this point. So we're gonna have two timers running at the same time. We're gonna have a warning timer and we're going to have the actual timer that logs you out. So let's start with a warning timer. So we'll say our warning timer, initially we'll set that equal to null as well as the actual logout timer which we'll also set to null. When we are mounted, let's go ahead and do this inside a method and we'll say this.setTimers. All right, let's create that method here, that set timers equal to a function. And there we go. Let me go ahead and add an extra space there and let's go ahead and set our timers at this point. JavaScript does make this fairly easy. So we're gonna set warning timer equal to set timeout is the function that we're looking for and we're going to need a handler so we'll just say this dot uh, warning message maybe we'll call it and then we need the actual timeout now this is going to be in milliseconds so this is going to be 1000 milliseconds so that would be one second now for testing purposes let's make this just four seconds that way it comes up pretty quick so we'll say four times 1000 milliseconds that's just simply four seconds okay so of course in real life we're gonna up this number quite a bit, probably 14, 15 minutes or something like that. But for testing purposes of this project, obviously we need this to come up fairly quick. When this timer runs out, what is going to happen is that this warning message, this actual method is going to be called. Let's create that now. That way we can start to see something in the browser. Say warning message, say function. And for now, I'll just alert warning. Just something that we know is actually working with this timer. All right, now let's try this reset timer thing. Now that we do have one warning timer, what do you think we need to do whenever we reset the timers? Well, all we need to do is basically get rid of this timer, clear it out, and then just set a new one. So we'll say clear timeout. Go ahead and clear this dot warning timer. And then we'll simply call set timers again so that this time it just gives you a brand new timer. 
All right, let's go through this flow very quickly. All right, so we've got a timer. We're calling it the warning timer. And then we're going to call set timers when the component is mounted. All this does is it sets a timeout currently of four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds, really. This warning message is what's going to be called if this set timeout expires. Once it expires, it's going to call this function right here. And this function is this one right here. It's a method called warning message. For now, all it does is alerts warning. Now, if we have an event listener, right, which is we set up up here, we've got a list of events that we're listening for. Everything that we think a user can do to reset this timer. Now, we are systematically running through each one of these events. And we're adding a window event listener. And when these events occur, we're going to be invoking the reset timer. This is another method that we have here, which clears our timeout. And clear timeout is just a JavaScript function, which is the opposite of set timeout, basically. So we're going to clear the timeout, in this case, the warning timeout. Then we're going to set a new one. We're simply going to recall the same exact function again that we called in our mounted. And we're going to do this over and over and over until the user leaves the page or until something else happens. That's all we're doing. I'll hit save. Let's go into the browser and I'll hit refresh on this. Let's wait the four seconds. And it looks like it didn't work. Let's see what the console has to say. Okay. So it says you are reading reset timer of undefined. And this is actually a great example. This has happened to me a couple of times. I do forget from time to time that some of these functions in JavaScript don't really have the this binding to it. It's actually quite simple. The problem is right here. This for each is not bound to this. And so when I'm trying to do this reset timer inside of this callback, it doesn't work. Now, technically, fat error functions were introduced to fix this, but you could simply just pass in this if you like this notation instead. And I think that that'll fix our problem. Let's see if this warning goes away. Hit refresh. Sure enough, it goes away. And hopefully, we get a message. And there it is. There is my warning message. So again, after four seconds, it's just giving me a warning. I'll go ahead and hit refresh again. We'll wait the four seconds. And here it is. Now, if I keep moving my mouse, I hit refresh one more time, but this time I'm going to keep moving my mouse. And as I move my mouse, you understand that that timer never runs out because I keep resetting that timer. And so this is okay. This is what would work. You see, no warning at all. Now, the minute that I stop my mouse and four seconds go by, now we're going to get a warning. And there it is. We're going to need to do just about the same thing, but this time for the logout timer. So when I'm setting my timers, I will need another timer. And this one will be the logout timer. And my logout timer in this particular instance, let's go ahead and make it maybe 10 seconds. That might be too much. Let's go for six seconds. Again, in a deal world, this will probably be maybe 14 minutes. I'll just leave this as a note here. And then this one should be 15 minutes. What that would look like is obviously you would turn this into 60. So that would look something like 14 minutes times 60 seconds times 1000 milliseconds. Okay. So that's what that would look like for that one. And for that one, I'm sure you figured it out. It's 15 minutes times 60 seconds times 1000 milliseconds. That's how you would make this 14 minutes and this one 15 minutes. This is the formula that you would use instead of this one. Just as a quick side note there. Okay, so we've got a logout timer, which is a different time. Obviously, it is bigger. And what would happen with the warning is perhaps we would just show a message. Let's do that now. Let's go ahead and display here. Are you still with us? Question mark. So I want to show this div if, in fact, the user has expired the warning timeout. So when we expire our warning timeout, instead of alerting, let's create a new piece of data here. And we'll call it uh, warning zone. We'll set that equal to false initially. But if we hit our warning timer, I want to go ahead and set that to true. Warning zone, we'll go ahead and set that equal to true. Now, if it's set to true, then of course, we're going to want to set it to false if we reset the timer. So let's go ahead and do that down here. Say this dot warning zone, we'll set that back to false. Okay. Let me move this up maybe to 10 seconds. That way I do see a little bit of a difference. And then up here with a simple VF, 
I can say, okay, if we are in the warning zone, then go ahead and display this text. Okay, let me go ahead and click OK. I'll hit refresh, nothing, and hopefully that message pops in. And there it is. Are you still with us? I moved my mouse so it went away. Let me wait the four seconds again. There it is. But the minute I move my mouse, it goes away. So ultimately, that would be a nice and non intrusive way that you can warn the user that we're about to expire. Okay, so we've got sort of the formula working. We've got that warning message. And now, of course, at this point, we need to continue with the logout. So not warning message, but logout user. And ultimately, in here, this is where we're going to actually perform the logout of the user. Now, in this part here, I'm going to write a little bit of specific Laravel logic to actually log the user out. However, in this part, if this is a part where you're not using Laravel and you're using just about anything else, you just need to write in some code to log you out of whatever backend system you are using. In the case of Laravel, there is a logout button, which is basically present just about everywhere. We could simply grab into the document and let's go ahead and get an element by ID. And the ID is logout form. So when we get our form, let's go ahead and submit it. And with any luck, that should work after 10 seconds. Let's give it a go. We should get a warning after four seconds. And there it is. And if we don't perform any additional actions, hopefully after 10 seconds, it'll log out. And there it is. We're out. It has officially logged me out of my application automatically. It all happened kind of quick, but again, I keep reiterating this because I think it's important. Remember, five seconds is definitely not enough. You want this to be way longer than that. Okay, now I want to show you something, and this is important for us to understand about event listeners. When you attach event listeners, you need to destroy those. If you don't, your application is going to behave a bit erratically. So we are adding these event listeners, but at no point are we actually getting rid of them. So when you add an event listener, you need to remove the event listener. Luckily for us, Vue has different life cycles that we can jump into and use. Mounted, of course, is one of them. We also have destroyed, which is basically the opposite of mounted. So whatever you do in mounted in terms of things like adding event listeners, we want to destroy when the component gets destroyed. So in my destroy method, I will go ahead and basically copy this, paste it in here, and let's invert this to the opposite of everything. So we're going to remove all of my event listeners. And then on top of that, instead of setting my timers, I want to go ahead and reset my timers as well, just in case. So this will basically get rid of everything. Okay, so now hopefully everything works. We'll see if it does. So let's go ahead and get that warning. And there it is. And now I'm going to stop the warning. But unfortunately, I think it's going to log out again. And there it is. And this may puzzle you again. And it's just to do with the fact that we are actually not clearing out the second timer. When we are resetting our timer, we are clearing out the warning timer. But we forgot to clear out the logout timer. We'll say logout timer. We'll reset that as well. And now I think we are good to go. Let me go ahead and log in. Log in. Okay, we'll wait for the warning. And there it is. Go ahead and reset that. We get a warning again. So we can continue to reset that warning. It doesn't log out unless I don't reset the warning. I'll go ahead and hold my mouse here for just a second. And now it should log us out after 10 seconds. And boom, it logs us out after 10 seconds. So that is basically the completed project right there for this view component. A little bit of a different view component. And you may have not even thought about all of the different ways that you can use view components. Remember, view components don't necessarily need to be something that you actually display on your page. They could be just about anything, like something like this auto logout that we generated. Let's go through the whole component, top to bottom, one more time as a quick review, and then we'll call it a day. So we've got a list of events, right? These are all the events that are going to reset our timer. We're going to set two timers. We're going to have a warning timer and a logout timer. Then we're going to have a warning zone. This is just a simple Boolean that we're going to use to display a message. In a perfect world, we would style this very nice and bright, maybe like in a yellow up at the top or even a pop-up message. You can have this be a complete big message that covers your page. 
it's entirely up to you how you design and handle that. Okay, so when our component is mounted, we are going to iterate through each of these events and we're going to add an event listener to the window. Now the for each is going to give us each of these words as event and then we can just pass that through as the first parameter. Now when these events happen, we need to do something. In this case, we're calling this reset timer. Now the way that we've written this function here, a little bit of on purpose, I just wanted to show you that, is we don't have binding to this. And in this particular instance, this would be outside of the scope of this callback function. Now we can bind this by simply putting comma this. And now when you refer to this inside of this callback, you're actually referring to this component. Otherwise, this would be a new this. I know a little bit tricky, but that's just the way JavaScript does it. This set timer is the next step inside our mounted. And all this does is it generates two timers. Like I said, I have the warning timer and we're using the simple JavaScript function of set timeout. Now when set timeouts expire, it's going to call another function. In this case, warning message and in the logout, it's going to call logout user. As a second argument, it takes a number of milliseconds that this timer should be counting for. In my particular case for this demo, I used 4,000 milliseconds, which is just four seconds. In the real world, I recommend you use probably 14 minutes, and this is the formula that you would use. I did the same exact thing for the logout timer. I used 10 seconds, but you should probably use maybe 15 minutes. Just a recommendation. And then the warning zone. This is that other parameter that we had up here to display our message. If the timer is set, then of course my warning zone should be equal to false. Okay, so let's talk about scenario one. Say that my warning timer expires. It's going to call warning message, this function right here. The only thing I will do for the warning is I will simply set the warning zone, this, this one Boolean that we have to display this message, we're just gonna set that equal to true. That way it actually shows up. Now, if the user takes any of these actions, then of course we are going to reset my timer again, because remember we have an event listener that hits the reset timer. And the reset timer clears the timeouts and sets new timers. That's all it's doing. So basically we are starting from scratch at that point. In that case, warning zone is once again set equal to false, which will hide the message that we have up here. As simple as that. But then if all of that fails, we're going to have another one that's going to be counting. And it's going to be counting at a different rate because we're going to have more seconds. So if they don't perform any action, then we will expire the second timer. And once it does, that is going to hit the logout user, which is this one right here, where you would perform whatever logic you need to do to log out of your application. I am building this on top of Laravel. So this would be the Laravel specific one, but you can use any backend system, as I've mentioned before, to log them out. All you need to do is find a way to log out, whether it means that you'd have to perform a fetch request, access request, however you want to do it, or you need to actually find something in a form like I did here. You need to relocate using window, whatever you need to do. That's what is going to happen right here. Again, this one is only for Laravel. This is just the way Laravel does it. There's a hidden form in there, which is called logout form. I am just submitting it. That's all I'm doing. As if the user had actually clicked on it. And that's it. That's the whole entire component right there. A nice and reusable component. Now, just one quick side note. You only want to display this logout component if the user is authenticated. Wherever you end up using this component, make sure that it only shows up if it's not going to fail. Otherwise, you need to do some additional checking inside of your component to make sure that the user is in fact logged in. Because if you try to do this and the user is not logged in, it's just going to error out. And that's going to be kind of weird for your application. It can cause some weird side effects. So again, either you make sure that you only display this if the user is authenticated, or you have to perform some additional checks that are specific to you just to make sure that the user is in fact logged in. So with that, we'll call it a day. My name is Victor. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.